Private Investigations Exterior Suburbia Day It's mid-morning in Middle Ireland, a labyrinth warren of landscape gardens, cobble driveways, and color-coded wheelie bins. The early risers have risen and gone to work. The school rush is over, dogs are being walked, toddlers strolled. A courier van searches for a particular needle in this vast stack of architecturally designed needles. Over this, we hear a dial tone. Dim and muffled at first, it keeps going on and on, sounding more forceful with every second. Then it stops sharply, and we hear a measured and serenely calm voice say, Hello, emergency services. What is the nature of your emergency? We hear the sound of a woman breathing erratically, panicked, coming down the phone line. Hello, ma'am? Are you okay? What is the nature of your emergency? Interior landing, Grealish House, day. It's a spacious and well-appointed house, the sort of place you'd expect to find a couple of high-achieving young professionals. Close on Helen Grealish, 30, looks after herself, dresses in a hip, smart, casual style. She is standing on the upstairs landing, heaving deep and panicked breaths as she tries to talk into a mobile phone. Tears stream down her face. There are speckles of blood on one cheek and on her hands. Her eyes dart around. When she speaks, her voice is soft. My husband! He's... uh, Somebody's killed him! Somebody killed my husband! Okay, ma'am. Please stay calm. What is your name? He's not... What? What is your name, ma'am? Helen. Helen Graylish. Okay, Helen. You're doing very well. Now, are you certain that your husband is dead? Have you checked him for a pulse? I can help with that if needs be. No! Yes! He's not moving! He's cold! I just got back! And... It's okay, Helen. Please stay calm. Is there anyone else in the house with you? What? No! Could there be an intruder in the house with you? Are you in any immediate threat or danger? No! I don't... No, there's no one. Good. That's good. Keep calm now, Helen. You're doing great. I need to ask now, are you or your husband insured? There's a moment of silence. When the operator speaks again, their voice, for the first time in the exchange, has a nervy edge to it. Helen, have you or your husband got criminal justice insurance? Yes. We're with Excelsior. The operator sighs with relief. Oh, that's excellent. Helen... You'll be in good hands there. I'm going to put you directly through to them right now. An abrupt click is followed by a dial tone, followed by... Hello. You are through to the Excelsior Insurance Low Rate Emergency Hotline. Thank you for choosing Ireland's premier criminal justice insurance provider. Unfortunately, all our operators are busy at the moment. But please stay on the line. Your emergency is important to us. Helen is left staring off into the middle distance, visibly shaking listening to inappropriately perky music. Fade to, main titles, fade in, interior ladies restroom, day. An average workplace restroom, rows of sinks, rows of cubicles, empty but for one cubicle. A reusable takeaway coffee cup sits on the end of the sink counter, little wisps of steam emanating from its drinking slot. We hear a groan and then a toilet flushing. The cubicle door opens and out steps Eileen Drew, 2021, and clearly making the most of her youth. She steps to a sink and washes her hands, grimacing to herself at the state of her reflection. She dries her hands and then stops at the mirror again. She steadies her eyes for a moment, then pulls a bottle of eye drops from her handbag. She puts three drops in each eye, then, secreting the bottle back into her bag, snatches up the coffee and leaves. Interior call center, day. A large open plan office space with row after row of single desk cubicles. Each desk is manned by a young man or woman, nobody older than 24, talking into microphone headsets. They all have a bank of three monitors throwing information at them and their fingers are hammering tirelessly at ergonomic keyboards. Eileen strolls down the center aisle, offering perfunctory nods to anyone who glances in her direction. One woman looks up and catches her eye. Eileen makes a face at her, a shared joke. The woman responds as Eileen moves on. The woman turns back to her monitors. And thank you for choosing Excelsior Insurance, Ireland's premier criminal justice insurance provider. Eileen reaches her desk. She wearily sits down, adjusting her seat for comfort. 
She takes a slug of coffee, slowly exhales, stretching out her fingers, glances around, and then finally and reluctantly puts on her headset. She stares at her monitor for a second, and then bracing herself, clicks a link on her central monitor indicating her next call. Hello. You are through to the Excelsior Insurance Low Rate Emergency Hotline. My name is Eileen. How may I help you? She waits a moment, but gets no response. She shares a look with a man sitting opposite her. This clearly isn't new territory to either of them. Interior landing, Grealish House, day. Helen is still standing on the landing, her eyes locked on the bedroom where her late husband's body lies. Hello. You are through to the Excelsior Insurance Low-Rate Emergency Hotline. My name is Eileen. How may I help you? It takes a moment for Helen to realize the voice she is hearing now isn't a recording. She comes alive. It's my husband! He was... He was... (laughs) Helen becomes overwhelmed with emotion. Intercut. Phone conversation. It's okay. Take your time. Take a deep breath, and let's start with your name and account number, please. Helen takes a deep breath and composes herself about as well as she's capable of. (gasps) Uh, Um, yes, I'm Helen Grealish. Thank you. And your account number, please? I... uh, I don't... what? I... uh, It's okay, uh, Helen. Stay calm. When you purchased your plan, you would have been issued with a card. The number would be on that. Helen racks her memory, first searching her handbag and then looking around as if they might have framed it and hung it on the wall next to their wedding photos. She freezes, remembering then her eyes moving to the bedroom door. Her voice goes weak. It's in Connor's wallet. Connor? My husband. And where is he? He's he's dead. He's <laughs> Somebody killed him. He's why I'm calling. Eileen winces at her error, but carries on regardless. Okay, Helen. I'm really sorry about this, but I have to have that account number. We follow a strict three-step verification process. Uh, But- Helen stares at the door, horrified by the prospect. Interior, call center, day. Please try not to disturb the body too much. Eileen puts a hand over her mic and turns to the man opposite her. Why can't they ever remember their numbers? The man smirks. Eileen takes a slug of coffee. She stretches, cricks her neck, waits. Interior landing, Grealish House, day. Helen stares, horrified at the door to the bedroom. She tries to say something, to protest, but caves, acquiescing to Eileen's instruction. She places the phone down on a side table, and head bowed and trembling, she walks through the door. Interior bedroom, Grealish House, day. It's a spacious but cozy modern master bedroom. All muted colors and soft furnishings, wall-to-wall wardrobes and ensuite bathroom. A large, inviting, imploring even king-size bed centers the room. Your eye drawn to a soothing landscape hanging above it. It has the feel of a refuge, a sanctuary from the chaos beyond. But for the lifeless, contorted body of Connor Grealish, forever mid-thirties and boyishly handsome, lying in the middle of the shag pile carpet surrounded by an enormous pool of coagulating blood, and the large blood-stained kitchen knife by his outstretched hand. Helen hesitates just inside the doorway, her face a mess of tears, snot, and streaking makeup. Her whole body rattles as she walks across the room, the bloody carpet squelching beneath her feet. With great difficulty, she removes Connor's wallet from his pocket and leaves, traumatized and bloodied. Interior landing, Grealish House, day. She walks to the side table and tries to pick up the phone. It slips from her grip, so she has to hold it up with two hands, the card protruding from between her fingers so she can read the number. She takes a second to compose herself before... I've got it. It's... Interior call center, day. Eileen taps away at the keyboard before continuing. Thank you. And can I have your date of birth, please? Interior landing, Grealish House, day. Helen relaxes a little, seeing an end in sight. September 12th, 1990. Interior, call center, day. Eileen has just clicked something with her mouse. Now I've just sent a six-digit code to the phone number attached to this account. Could you read that back to me when you receive it? Interior landing, Grealish House, day. Helen is still standing there with the card poking out between her fingers, both hands gripping the phone. She looks confused for a moment and then hears a phone message alert coming from the bedroom. 
She looks at the door once again, and it takes everything she has in her not to break down right there and then. 